Hey folks, welcome back to another review with yours truly, Sam Healy. Today we're taking a look at V Commandos. This is a game that I was introduced to back at UKGE this year, and I was able to play it again at Gen Con with the designer, and then uh, when they uh, were finished making all the copies, he sent a review copy for us to review, and so here we are. Uh, I've talked about this on a couple of different uh, occasions of late, and uh, I, I think you already know that I enjoy the game, but uh, I'm eager to teach you the basics of how to play the game and uh, hopefully give you a good taste of how it works. So let's get down to the table and I'll show you. The first thing you do in a, v, in a game of V Commandos is you have to choose an operation. So I've chosen Operation Black T here, uh, which took place in, Norm in Norway in February 1943. Now, a couple of things that the operation card shows you is that first of all, it shows you how long you can expect to play. So this specific scenario takes about two hours. And this is how many uh, commandos can take part in the action. Then if you flip that operation card over, it shows you the different terrain sets that are going to be used for this operation. And it also shows you how they have to be taken out. For example, the streets and the bridges have to be accomplished at the same time, and then that unlocks the fuel depot. Then you would pull out the three different terrain cards that come with it, and this basically gives you how the maps are set up on the board. Down here, this means how many commandos can be on this terrain, which is important because if any more than that uh, come onto this terrain, which is the entire map, then the alarm is automatically raised, uh, which can happen because if one commando uh, finishes his mission first, he can uh, travel over to the other one if the other guys are having problems. But so for example, uh, this guy, uh, the bridges down here in the bottom part of the table, uh, two commandos are going to go on that mission, and then for the streets, which is up here on the top level up here, uh, one commando will go on that, and then once both of these, if both of these are finished successfully, then we'll move on to the fuel depot, which as you can see can hold up to four uh, different uh, commandos at the same time. Uh, terrain cards, you have special, you know, the objective of this particular part of the mission, all of the different tokens that are going to be necessary for the board, how the board is laid out. Additionally, the operation will come with a card that basic, gives a basic rundown of what the operation was all about, why they were going on the operation, and so forth and so on. And then on the back side, there are special rules that will govern each of the different areas. Um, so if you look at the back of the operation card again, you'll see that they have this little icon here that says special on both ends. And that means that those specific two terrains are going to have special rules that will govern how that plays. Now each game turn in V Commandos is split up into four different phases. The first phase is the event phase where you're going to take an event card from the deck here and flip it over for each terrain that is in play. So one will have to be put in play for the streets and then another one will be put in play down here for the bridges. They provide movement direction for enemy units on the board and they also provide uh, some type of small rule change during this turn. Second is the commando phase where the commandos will be able to move about the terrain uh, using uh, up to three actions if they want uh, to try to accomplish that terrain's goals. Then you also have the enemy phase. The enemy phase is broken up into three uh, parts where you have a reinforcement phase where each of these entry points are going to be spawning new enemies. And then there will be a movement phase where the enemy units that are on the board will move in the direction of the event card showing here. And then you'll have a shooting phase where if there is a visible commando on the, on the uh, terrain that the enemy soldiers can see, then they will shoot at him. Then after that, we go back to the end of turn phase where we check for victory. If the victory uh, over this specific terrain, if these uh, requirements have, have been met or not, if they have, then we can shut this terrain down and focus on just the one or move on to the next set of terrain that the operation has set forth. So uh, for an example here, uh, the first thing that I would do here is the sapper is I would enter the hex, uh, enter the terrain with using a trap door, which is one action. And then I can move uh, to this one and remain stealthy. 
uh, like this, but as soon as I enter this terrain and there's an enemy present, I have to make a uh, stealth check, which means I have to roll one die for every enemy unit that is on that piece of the board, and if I roll a one or a two, which I didn't, but if I roll a one or a two, since it has the little eyeball right here, as you can see, uh, that means that I've been detected, but I rolled a six, so I'm okay. And then my second action, uh, well, that was my second action. My third action is going to be to close combat assault this guy, so I'm gonna do that and take him off of the board. Now, as soon as that attack was complete, that would have dropped a, an equipment token here which I pull out of the bag and we place it on the blue side here. Um, I think I am gonna go ahead and pick it up and put it on uh, my sheet like that because, my card, because uh, that can be used to open a locked door later on in the future. So that's a good thing to have. But uh, now the scout can come in. That's one to enter the terrain, two, to move on to this, and three, to defuse that part of the bomb. Now, the problem here is that now I'm, I'm, I'm on a reinforcement tile, which, is, which can be very bad, but we'll see how it works out. So over here on the streets terrain, Sergeant Bruno is going to enter here with, for one action, and then for his second and third actions, he's going to move stealthily from here to here. Now, the reason he had to use two actions to do that is because whenever you move onto a medium tile, um, you have to use an extra action uh, to stay stealthy. Uh, otherwise, um, you become seen. Basically, you are flipped over to this side. The alarm is triggered and uh, things begin to hit the fan very quickly. So he's going to spend one two, three, so he can remain stealthy. Now in the enemy phase, we're going to be taking the enemy reserve here and we're going to be populating all of the different spaces, spawn points basically, where we have uh, enemy units coming onto the board. Now, uh, we'll be pulling out, first of all, okay, we have a Mauser unit here, and over here we have another Mauser unit come out here. Over here in this building we have another Mauser unit, and over here we have huh, another Mauser unit. Okay, so that's it for this one. Now over here we have uh, one unit coming here, and one unit coming over here. Now once all enemies have been uh, deployed, the first immediate thing that we have to do here is that whenever an enemy unit shows up on a hex where we are, if we're stealthy, we have to make stealth checks. So the sapper and the scout here both have to make stealth checks. So the sapper first is seen and the scout is still stealthy, but that does raise the alarm, which means that next turn, this is going to be not a fun place to be uh, over here. The movement phase happens where uh, enemy units that are on the board are going to have to move in the direction uh, that is denoted by the event card. So, for example, uh, this guy um, is different. We'll get to him in just a few moments. Over here, since Sergeant Bruno is still stealthy, this person will simply move here and this person will move over here like that. Here, however, um, units are not going to move in the direction denoted here. They're going to move in the direction of the nearest uh, visible commando, um, unless they are protecting a uh, triangular shaped tile. So this guy here, instead of moving north, like the card said, he's going to move over here this way. This person will move this way. This person will move this way. Now, the shooting phase will begin. And here we have the sapper that is going to be the target of one, two shots, but they will be rolled separately. So here, we're looking at a four or higher, since that is the uh, kind of terrain that is in this tile here, he, there is a four or higher to hit. So the German unit rolls, and he rolls a one, which does not score a wound. And now the second guy over here that is adjacent, still can shoot, um, rolls a six, so that does hit 
our sapper for one wound there. And that's the end as far as uh, the shooting phase is concerned. Each group that shoots only shoots once. They don't continue shooting or anything like that. And that's generally how the game is played. It's a very basic example, but uh, you kind of get the gist of how everything flows. Now, uh, the mission will be considered an, a success as long as at least one person is able to accomplish all of the objectives and exit the uh, terrain successfully um, and then when you get for example in this situation if the sapper has died here which is probable um, uh, there will only be two commandos left to go on that third mission so there is uh, that uh, it's it's an interesting little game it heavily relies on stealth I think you can see from what happened here how bad everything can go if you don't do your best to remain stealthy um, but uh, that's how you play V Commandos. Now I, I hope you can tell from the way that the game uh, example went that remaining stealthy in this game is of paramount importance. Uh, everything can really go south in a very big hurry if you don't and so uh, part of that is determined on a die roll. Other other parts of it are determined by how you play the game, the choices you decide uh, to make, and that type of thing. So there is a lot of uh, tactics and strategy that can go into playing this game. That's one of the things that I really like about it. It is not just a go in and shoot them up and, and uh, you know, uh, all that kind of stuff type of game. You have to make right choices in order to uh, have a good chance at winning. Now, um, the uh, commandos down in the bridges in the uh, in the uh, rules explanation was they they were probably in between a rock and a hard place at that point. It was going to be difficult for them to pull out that situation. But a number of things could have happened. The uh, scout could have uh, taken out those two German enemies that were uh, in his uh, space. And maybe one of those guys had a med kit on him and then he would have been able to heal the sapper. And there's any number of things that could have happened. So the... the the writing wasn't necessarily on the wall, but it was definite, definitely formulating at that point. It was looking grim for them. However, uh, Sergeant Bruno up in the streets was doing a pretty good job of staying stealthy and, and accomplishing his objective uh, without any bumps in the road. So again, you can see that, that there's a lot of thematic uh, flavor uh, to this game. I like how the team had to split up and accomplish two different missions and then converge on the third one uh, to successfully complete this operation. I love how that is. And uh, there's a number of different operations in, in the game that come with the base game alone. So uh, there's so much goodness to this game. I, I really like the fact that it is uh, simple gameplay, simple decisions to make. Uh, most of the actions are zero or one uh, points of action costs to do them. Uh, so there isn't a whole lot of remembering how many action points you have to do. Most of them, most of the time, is zero or one, uh, with the caveat of being able to move on to a tile stealthily, and that is for two. So, again, uh, a very simple uh, rule set, um, a very... Uh, Good component quality. I like how, now I know all of these are just tokens, but the artwork on the tokens is good, providing a top-down display, of course, but uh, and I'm not necessarily a big fan of that, but it's it doesn't take away from the thematic um, envelopment that the game provides with everything else that comes with it, so I'm, I'm giving it a pass. Um, would this have been better with miniatures? <laughs> Maybe. Um, I, I mean, I'm, I'm, a, you know, I'm a sucker for plastic miniatures anyway, so, I mean, if, if they come up with plastic minis for the Germans and Americans and all these other things, well, then, wow, that's going to be awesome. But this game is great without miniatures. That's, that's one of the selling points on it for me, is that I don't have to have miniatures to or enjoy this game. I love the fact that it's cooperative. And the AI of the game is actually pretty smart most of the time. Now, it has a little bit of a leeway in that when there's a uh, equality to two different paths that an enemy can take, then the group decides on on them on their own which which path that enemy will take. So, there's a little bit of uh, fudge there, but 
other than that, the AI is is really well. I like the the duality of purpose for the event cards for providing different rules that will govern that specific turn. In addition to um, the providing direction for the movement of the enemy characters, so. the artwork on all of the tiles is very good. I like that the tiles are double sided, um, so that you have. Uh, freedom to make the board look the way that you want it to look. You don't have to use um, any one specific terrain type. Uh, you can make it look however you want it to look. So. Now, the one thing that I did want to show you is that these little bags that I have um, do not do not come in the base game. I wanted to make sure I mentioned that because these were bags that I was that I got for demoing the game at uh, UKGE. So overall, my thoughts on, on this game is well, you've already heard them. It, it's it's a great cooperative World War II game where uh, it is not all about just bang 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 bang. It is about going in accomplishing accomplishing the objective um, and getting back out that is the whole point of the game and I really enjoy that it's very thematic um, and you know it kind of had a, a castle Wolfenstein type feel to it and that was uh, one of my favorite video games from way 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 back so um, the idea of the game is novel um, not in innovative but novel I think it's uh, not necessarily something that you won't find anywhere else, but in today's day and age, most of the time you have a World War II game come out, it's going to be about bang, 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 and not about sneaking around and accomplishing this objective and getting back out. So I think from that perspective, the novelty of this game uh, uh, deserves two thumbs up for me. Um, I like the graphic design. The artwork is phenomenal. I was able to get a bunch of the digital uh, high res um, copies of the artwork for the game and I'm showing them to you right now and it's as you can see, it is great artwork, um, very good, uh, and I was very pleased with it as well. So there's a number of different uh, things that I could say about the artwork, but I'm letting it kind of just go uh, and show it to you itself. But uh, graphic design, gameplay, um, component quality, everything has really converged well on V Commandos. And if you have the inkling of the opportunity to give it a try, I highly recommend it. That is V Commandos from Triton Noir. See you guys on the flip side.